marshal had a daughter, a pretty winsome daughter, and he brung her up as the best as he knowed how. She didn't need a tutor to handle a six-shooter, and her daddy was so proud he took a bow. Oh, my charming daughter with eyes like deep water, the starlight in your hair most every night. Oh, you've been a heap of joy, how I wish you'd have been a boy. Oh, I know you'd stand beside me in a fight. Now the ship marshal's daughter done things she hadn't taught her to help her daddy keep the peace and love. The night she'd go out prowling, all the coyotes they was a howling, and as a boy she fought to help her paw. coming up the trail, well, that's my dad, Ben Dawson, one of the finest U.S. Marshals who ever lived, and the finest father a girl ever had. As a Marshal, he's respected and feared. As a father, he's kind and gentle, and he loved my mother very much. But I wish her picture didn't remind him of the man he's vowed to kill, Trigger Gans the white renegade who led that Indian attack so long ago. As I grew up, I often wished there was something I could do to help him. I probably never would have found a way if it hadn't been for my little Mexican friend, Chico. And that's not all, Chico. The outlaws got away on the last job ahead of this one, too. Gee, just break Daddy's heart if he lost his job after all these years. Me? I know. If you was Machacho instead of a girl. Yes, Chico. If I'd only been a boy instead of a girl. I tried to help Dad on his last job, but he said it wasn't ladylike. Say, I have an idea. Why don't you just like a boy, and then when the bandits come, you could say, Alto, manos arriba. Alto, manos arriba. What do you think, huh? That is a good idea, no? Someone's coming. I better put you away. No, senorita. You cannot do this to me. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, senorita. You cannot do this to me. I want to see the man what is coming. How are you, Lori? Why, Ruth Mason. What are you doing away out here? Hunting for you and your dad. Got a letter for him from headquarters, so your Uncle Jet said I could go out and start looking for him. Lori, why didn't you come home when the last job was finished? Well, Russ, that's just the trouble. Dad didn't get the job done. He got shot in the leg, so we had to camp here to give it time to heal. But how did you ever find us? <laughs> it's pretty hard to hide a rig like that in this country. Lori, I've said this before. Traveling with a medicine show is no life for a young girl like yourself. Why don't you let me take you it's away? It's no use, Russ. As long as there's outlaws and murderers, they'll have to be marshals like Dad to bring them to justice. Well, and women like me to take care of the marshals. Maybe we could talk him into retiring. Oh, not Dad. He'd just curl up and die if he ever lost his job. Say, have, have you ever seen a cavalry horse after he's been taken off the picket line and turned out to pasture? Well, maybe you're right. I've got to admit you lead a pretty exciting life. Hey, uh, what did the old cavalry horse and his caretaker get into this time? 
Well, it's the same old story. Dad got orders from headquarters to report on some trouble in Bitterweed. With Dad posing as a medicine man, we arrived there about noon. I was in the wagon dressing, and Dad was getting ready to make his spiel. The first act was just finishing. Thank you. Step right in close, folks. The big show's about ready to start. Hey, you, uh, step in just a little closer so the man behind you can see. Everybody ready? Good. Now I want you to hear Doc Dawson's Musical Maniacs. About ready, Laurie? Be right out, Dad. Are you Doc Dawson? At your service, sir. Well, I'm the sheriff here. You better come on over to my office. And bring a bottle of that snake oil you're fixing to sell. Oh, honey, give me a bottle of our famous tonic for the sheriff here. Here you are, Dad. There you are. All right, follow me. You better come along too, miss. Am I glad to see you? And you too, Laurie. Oh, Hello, yeah. Sheriff. You know, I've been trying to get a chance to talk to you ever since I got in town this morning. I figured you was. That's the reason I brought you in here. Hey, uh, how do you like the disguise? Oh, that's great. But I bet it's the only medicine wagon in the world that carries more guns than it does medicine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pull up a chair and I'll tell you why I sent for you. What's the matter, Sonny? Don't you feel good? I'm all right. Seems to be the trouble, Bill. Well, it's a new band of outlaws that moved into this part of the territory, Ben. Hmm. Have you got any idea who their leader is? No, but he's plenty smart. He's been hitting the Wells Fargo relay stations and their banks in the smaller towns. Well, so far, no one has seen his face and lived to tell about it. Except in Sonny here. Now they killed his granddad over at Three Parks Relay Station about two weeks ago. I'll never forget what he looks like. And someday I'll kill him just to get my gramps. Take it easy. I know just how you feel, Sonny. Tell us just what happened. Then we can help you catch him. Will you? Honest? Cross my heart. Now you start from the beginning and tell me everything you can remember. Well, it was about 8 o'clock at night. It was real dark outside. Gramps was giving me my lessons like he did every night after supper. I was about to ask him how much was nine times seven, and he heard something outside. son. Looks like we're in for a little trouble. You better get down out of sight. They got me outnumbered. What are you going to do, Gramps? You'll see, son. You'll see. Yeah. 
no use trying to hold out any longer, son. Better give them what they want and let them get out of here. But, Gramps, you always said the company would never lose a dollar of their money when it was in your hands. But I... I can't take any more chances with your life, son. And don't you worry about our reputation. I got my savings in the bitter weed bank. And that's enough to cover the company's loss. Now don't you worry. You can't do that, Gramps. That's your retiring money to pay for the rent. I won't let you do it. Oh, I'll get him. <laughs> son. Son. No, no. No, Jack. is dead. You poor kid. Oh, Dad, won't this robbing and killing ever stop? Isn't there some way to make the West a safe place for people to live and raise their families? There must be some way. Your dad has spent his whole life trying to make that dream come true, Lori. Yeah. And someday we will. Sonny, can you tell us anything else about this killer? Did you ever see him before? No. All I know is that he had a big scar under his left eye. I heard one of the men call him Trigger. Yeah, I've been given a lot of thought to that. It sounds like Trigger Gans. Trigger Gans. Yeah, the law's been looking for him for a long time. And so have I. Dad. Honey, you go over and help him out with the show. And, uh... Take the boy with you. Would you like to see the show, Sonny? And Laurie. Yes, Dad? Give him the biggest bag of candy in the wagon. Son like him myself, but things would have been different. Yeah. Same old Ben. You always did want a son, didn't you? Yeah. Say, has that kid got any relatives? No. The poor kid's been all alone ever since Gan killed his granddad. Well, who's gonna take care of him then? Say, you don't oh, suppose sorry, I... Ben. I'm afraid you're a little late. You see, the Widow Brown has already spoken for him. In fact, we're taking him out to her ranch this afternoon. It looks like you're gonna have to be satisfied with that pretty daughter of yours. And from what they tell me, she can outride and outshoot any cowboy on the range. Yeah. I'm awful proud of her, Bill. But now that she's getting old enough to marry and settle down, sometimes I wonder if I did the right thing by teaching her those things. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. And now we'd like to meet the star of our show, the girl you've been waiting to see, Miss Laurie Dawson. My heart has plenty of room for you. More room than the ocean so blue. If you, would you did all right. Look at that. My heart has plenty of room for you. My heart has plenty of room for two. Each time it beats, it beats for you. You seem to hypnotize when you hit your furry eyes. I'd never think of leaving you. You said that you loved me. See you again. My heart is bound to break in two. 
glad that you love me. You kiss me and then you left me to wonder if I'd ever see you again. My heart is bound to break in two. If I don't get a kiss from you, but when I see you smile and walking down the aisle, my heart has room for nobody but you. Sonny, what are you doing? Give me that gun. I was just getting a beat on the man that killed my gramps. Are you sure? Which one is it? Oh, now you let him get away. He was just going into that saloon there, but I'll get him. Now, wait a minute. You wouldn't want to get just one of them and let the others get away, would you? No, but... Of course not. And you can't go in there. They'd recognize you right away. Say, I know what to do. You tell me what he looks like, and I'll go in and see who's with him. Well, he's got on a buckskin vest. Whiskey. Everybody here, Frenchy? In the corner. See you later. But if he comes out, I'm going to plug him. Now you stay right here. Piano player about a job. Doing what? Singing and dancing. Came to town with a medicine show. Got tired of traveling around the territory. Thought a job in here would pay more dough. Oh, yeah. You're the filly I saw singing out on the wagon platform. So you dance too, huh? You know, I've got connections around here. Maybe I can help you. Thanks, just the same. No need to bother. No bother? You're cute. You know, I got a hunch we're going to see a lot of each other. You know, I think you've got something there. Sorry I can't dance for you, but my partner isn't here. I'll take care of that, too. Frenchie, you heard the lady. You've been telling us about what a great dancer he was up in Quebec. How about giving the little gal a trial? Oui. Now you are going to see something real great. Pianist, play some music. <laughs> That was pretty good. This is your pay. <laughs> Come on, Frenchie, get out of here. Now, does anyone else want a bottle of my Wonder Tonic? Grows hair on bald heads? Makes old bucks out of, uh... Sorry, folks. Take over, Don. Did you find him? I sure did. Laurie. Oh, Dad, I've got something to tell you. And I've got something to tell you, young lady. I never thought that I would live to see the day that my daughter would go into a place like that. But, 
Dad, listen. You listen to me. I've told you a hundred times that just because my work takes me to all kinds of places and with all kinds of people, it doesn't give you an excuse to be anything but a lady at all times. But, Dad, you've got to listen. I just saw Trigger Gans in there. He's gone now, but he's coming back. He's planning to rob the bank at midnight. Tonight, huh? That's just what I've been waiting for. Now, aren't you sorry you bawled me out? You know, I could help you a lot more if you'd let me. Sure, honey. I appreciate the information, but you're still my little girl, and I won't have you messing in men's work. Oh, but, Dad, you said yourself I could shoot better than any man you ever saw. Please let me help you. You'll be outnumbered. No, honey. It ain't ladylike, and I don't want to hear any more about it. You stay in the wagon where you belong. Gosh, I wish I was a big man. So do I. And that's the whole story, Bill. Tonight at midnight. You got any deputies? Yeah, two, but they're out on other jobs. But I can deputize as many men as you want. The less people know about this, the better for us. I want this to be a complete surprise.
Leave Gans to me. There it is, Frenchy. Reach for it, Gans. I drop your gun. Huh. to swallow after hunting for Gans so long. Yes. Poor Dad. Wounded twice in four months. Hey, that could be very serious for men his age. Hey, where is the old war horse? I don't see him around. He's down by the creek, watering the horses. Who is that? Oh, now, don't get excited. That was my friend Chico. Where is he? Right here. Here? Huh. Whittle it out of wood. I saw one just like it in the theater in Dodge City last year. What does your dad think about it? Dad doesn't know about Chico. I wouldn't dare let him see me playing with dolls. You know, Laura, you're a funny girl. First you learn to ride and shoot like a man, and now uh, ventriloquism. Well, that's only the first half of the book. Take a look at the back. Jiu-jitsu. Japanese wrestling. Now, why would any girl want to learn about jiu-jitsu? Oh, that's for the boys when they put their arms around me and try to kiss me. Oh? Well, I bet that wouldn't stop me from kissing you if I had my arms around you. Why don't you try it? Well, I reckon I will. <laughs> Gee, Russ, I didn't mean to be so rough. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Here comes Dad. Well, hello, Russ. How are you, Mr. Dawson? Oh, fine, Russ, fine. Never felt better in my life. Hey, what are you doing out here? Well, we got a letter for you from headquarters. Thought it might be important, so I offered to bring it out. Oh. Four days through Indian country, just bring me a letter? You sure it wasn't just to see Lori? Oh, Dad. <laughs> well, here's a surprise, honey. I'm being sent back to my own territory. You suppose back home they found out I'm a U.S. Marshal? No, sir. They still think you're a traveling medicine man. That's good. What seems to be the trouble back there? Mm, some bad news, Mr. Dawson. Take a look at this. Hmm. Wrestlers on Rampage. been the same since you got big enough to go gallivanting around the country with your dad. <laughs> Let me look at you. I just can't believe that you're the same little girl that I helped to bring up here on the ranch after your mother died. <laughs> oh, you're just too pretty to be true. You old flatter, <laughs> but I love it. Glad to be back, Jed. It's good to have you, Ben. 
And you certainly got back at the right time. The rancher's having a protest meeting this afternoon. You just have time to get cleaned up and get over there. Come on, Laurie, I want to show you what I've done to your old room. I think you all know why I call this meeting. Something has got to be done about the rustling and killing that's going on out in the territory. That's right. There's a cattle buyer out the Circle J right now buying their herd because Mr. Jones is afraid he can't hold them. And you can't make a living out of a ranch with no stock. What's the matter with the sheriff? Sheriff Barnes has done a fine job here in the Deep Fork District. But your ranchers are all out in the territory and that's outside of his jurisdiction. Let's send for a U.S. Marshal. That wouldn't do any good. They just lay low till he left. Uh, we ought to take the law in our own hands. Yeah, but how? I think I have the answer to this. I know that some of you men have been hit pretty hard. I've worked out a plan to organize the Cattlemen's Association so we can all work together. My bank will make loans to any of you men who need help to get back on your feet. How about you being the first to sign up, Jed? As the largest ranch in the territory, I'm sure you can see the advantages of forming this association. I'm afraid I don't agree with you, Anderson. The Dawsons will take care of their own. And the rest of you had better do some thinking before you get stampeded into this thing. Look at what happened to George Stevens. He mortgaged his spread to build a new barn to the bank. And two weeks after it was finished, he got a bullet in the back. And now the bank owns his spread. And the same thing happened to Joe Green and Happy Brown and everyone else that borrowed money from the bank. That's not true, Jed. Maybe Jed don't need no help, but how about the little fellows like me and the rest of you that haven't got a big spread like the Lazy D to back you up? Now, wait a minute. I'm one of those little men, and I think Jed's right. The rest of you men can do what you want. As far as I'm concerned, I don't want a thing to do with Anderson and these hired gunmen. You ready to go, Jed? Yes. Come on, Laurie. I don't like that kind of talk, Mason. You seem to be pretty anxious to put a stop to this association. Maybe you know a little bit more about this rustling than we think. I'm sorry about this misunderstanding, Mr. Anderson. I'm sure Uncle Jed will feel differently about your plan after he's had time to think it over. Couldn't we have another meeting later? Why, of course, Miss Dawson. It's nice having you and Ben back home. Thank you. But something seems to be wrong. Well, it looks all right. It's, uh, um... <laughs> Russ, you're gonna look awful funny walking around in this. <laughs> Gee, you're home early today, Dad. I didn't expect you for hours. Anything new? Nah. Uh, same old story. I saw four of them run away with a small bunch, but they split up and got away. I guess I ain't as good a trailer as I used to be. You'll get them, Dad. But I still think the Cattlemen's Association is a good idea. And I'm sure it would make your job easier. Well, maybe. But not with Anderson's gang running it. I'm more convinced than ever that Jed is right there mixed up in this rustling. But knowing it and proven, it's a different story. Ah, forget the whole thing. I'm too tired to think about it. Mr. Dawson, do you ever think of settling down on your ranch or retiring? Me retire? Uh -uh. That ain't for me, kids. I've been in this law business too long. Besides, it's in my blood. Now, if I ever had to put my gun away, I'd be lost. We've been together too long. Say, Russ, did I ever tell you about the day I got this gun? It was many years ago. I was standing at the cactus bar in Pecos. I was just a young buck at the time. I heard a ruckus in the boss's office, and you know me. I just couldn't resist getting into it.
just as good a man as I was 20 years ago. You sure are, Mr. Dawson. Look, Dad. Uncle Jed, what's the matter? Ambushed. Is he? Great so, Lori. Now you've got to get him dead. Yes, I know, honey. We will. Later. But Dad. Uncle Jed. Something's got to be done. Now. became an actor on the showboat, I used to drive a stagecoach, you know. You did? Yeah, I drove a stagecoach without any wheels. What held it up? Bandits. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, hope I'm not boring you folks with my experiences. Oh, no, not at all, Mr. Murray. It's all so exciting. Especially the way you outwitted the bandits and crooked gamblers. Couldn't you tell us more about that? Well, I don't like to brag, you know, but my unfailing ability to recognize an outlaw Plus, the unmatched skill that I have with the six shooter did give me a decided advantage. I'll never forget the time I ran into Ace King. He was, uh, he was the most notorious bandit on the river, you know. Ah, those were the days. But, enough about me. Let's talk about you, Miss Bolton. Uh, Deep Fork, is that your home? Well, I imagine it will be from now on. You see, I'm the new school mom. You a school mom? She's a school mom. <laughs> well, tell me, who do you have to see about enrolling in your class? Uh, now, Mr. Murray, be serious. I am serious. I was very backward in school, you know. Well, it certainly looks like you've outgrown it. Uh, how was your deportment in those days? Very good, very good. Would you believe it that every morning I used to bring in my pretty teachers an apple? Oh, teacher's pet? One of them did. Oh. That's the one I used in the show.
they're gone. And you were very brave. <laughs> Think what I would have done if I'd had a real gun. It's too bad all men aren't so brave. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that, Mrs. Hittleford. Some men just don't take naturally to guns in a life of action. Now, you, uh, you take this gentleman here. He's a peaceful, law-abiding citizen. Probably his first contact with violence. You wouldn't know an outlaw from a bag of beans, would you, Parson? Now, myself, I can spot a crook a mile away. Mr. Dawson, have you heard about the masked rider? He just saved the barracks payroll. You mean the one they call Al Coyote? That's right. <laughs> Must be quite a kid. Wish I had a son like him. <laughs> Look at that. El Coyote routes rustlers. When I took you into this deal, I thought you were tough. And now you let one masked man make fools of the lot of you. He may be afraid to show his face, but he throws lead like it was coming out of a Gatlin gun. And you ought to see his eyes. Give you the creeps. If I want anything done right around here, I have to do it myself. Take care of him the same way I took care of Jed Dawson. few days. I thought you deserted me. I've been in town, trying to keep an eye on Anderson and these friends. You know they're getting to look mad enough to bite a rattlesnake? I think it's on account of the way this mask rider, the El Coyote, has been messing up their robbing and rustling. Well, that's the way it should be. If they get mad enough, maybe they'll make the mistake Dad's been waiting for. You know, the thing I can't understand is why this El Coyote never captures any of them. He just scares them off and lets them go. Yes, that is strange, isn't it? Maybe he's trying to get the evidence to tie Anderson in with the rustlers. The same as Dad is. Yeah, it could be. Well, whatever the reason is, I sure hope we find out who it was that killed Uncle Jed. You know, I've been thinking about that, too. Lori, it ain't right for a young girl like yourself to have to worry about outlaws and killings. What you need is a home of your own, children. Somebody to watch out for you, work for you. Well, that's what every girl needs. Lori. I've been in love with you since the first day we've met. And, well, I've been building up a little spread on my own while you're away, and all it needs is the right person to settle down and help me run it. Yes, but Russ... But, Lori, Lori, honey, look. You'd love it. Honest, you would. It's the nicest little cabin right in the center of a grove of cottonwood trees and plenty of grass and on a stream of the clearest water you ever did see. Oh, please, Russ. I can't even think of anything like that now. I still have Dad to take care of. Well, Right now, I have to fix supper. But, Gloria... He'll come charging in just once too often. That'll be the end of that coyote. Just bought a plug of tobacco at the store. What's so exciting about that? I was looking at some saddles back at the grain sacks when Jones came in. He had a little talk with Morris. Said he didn't trust your bank anymore and that Ben Dawson was holding over $25,000 for him until they could take it over to the county seat. So that's it. Ben Dawson drew $50,000 of the Lazy D money out of the bank this morning. Must have it all stashed away together someplace. I think we better have a talk with Dawson. Now you're talking our language. Take him over to the Bear Valley cabin. Let me know when you get him there. Right, boss. Yo, 
glad to be here. We had a real rough trip. But we brought along the male Good. and a couple of females, too. <laughs> First of all, I want you to meet your new school mom. This is Miss Bolton. Here's a young lady that has a very, very broad knowledge. And I also have another young lady here, Miss Tittlefoot. <laughs> Miss Tittlefoot, uh, she's, she's pretty broad herself. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. And I know, ladies and gentlemen, that you'll be very glad to know that we've brought you your new possum. Your new possum. Possum, come on out here and meet the folks. Parson, my eye. Let's trigger again. <laughs> Trigger Gans is my prisoner. It's no good, Sheriff. Gans killed my brother Ed in a bank holdup a year ago, and I'm going to see that he pays for it. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, men. You've got to listen to Sheriff Barnes. Nobody wants to see Gans pay for his crimes any more than I do. Lynching is no good. Why, a law that's not lawful in all respects is worse than no law at all. All right, Ben, I'll go along with Take you. Take him away, Sheriff. Well, well, come on. Trigger Gans. Yeah, I thought you said he was going to show us how to handle these people. That fool. I told him not to show up in the daytime. Maybe that's why he dressed up like a parson. Keep your eye on Ben Dawson. Mr. Anderson, I'm Smiling Billy Murray. I'm in your show here, you know. I um, came in on the coach with that Trigger Gans. <laughs> he didn't fool me. I knew he was no good all the time. You know something? I can tell those crooks a mile away. <laughs> hey, you bartender, give me a drink before the fight starts. <coughs> gonna start. When you find out I can't pay for these drinks. And now we bring you the star of our show, a man whose father was the captain of a tug-of-war team, and this guy was his first... Fighting <laughs> Billy Murray! Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, and I'm glad to be back here in Deep Fall. Incidentally, bartender, you're absolutely right about that tug-of-war thing, and here, to prove it, is the rope. <laughs> Watch your remarks, bartender. Watch your remarks, because when I get aroused, I'm a pretty bad actor. Uh, yeah, the same thing goes when you're not aroused. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a little card game, showing you how they're playing, incidentally, if anybody sees the son of pale face, don't tell him I'm wearing this hat. Hey, wait a minute. If you're a real cowboy, how come your legs ain't bowed? I ride a very thin horse. Oh, <laughs> seriously, we have a little card game we're going to put on. Tonight, I'm going to give you an idea of how they're playing cards down in Tombstone. Down in Tombstone, and I have some very fine guests with us. Wonderful people that you know. First of all, the all-American cowboy, Johnny Mac Brown. Let's get him out of here. Yeah. Hey, 
good to see you. Good to see you. John, you know, we're going to play a little game of cards here and show the folks how they're playing down south. But before we do you know what we ought to do? We ought to make John uh, give us a little bit of that gun twirler. Would you like to see yeah. that? game of cards now just we two no 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 i invited another friend of mine uh uh, uh rattlesnake jimmy wakely oh no no i don't want to play with him he well, now, wait, wait a minute John. No. wait a minute you gotta play with him after all he's been invited and he's on his way over i think i think i hear the bell now jimmy wakely hey! hello jimmy ah jim good to see you Hey, I'm glad to be with you. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to play poker, you know. Going to play poker? Just the three of us? No, no, no. I invited Rough House Buddy Bear. Uh, I don't want to play with him. He cheats. Oh, no, wait a minute. You've got to play with him. I got, I don't look, like look, it. you've got to play with him. After all, he's already been invited and he's on his way over. In fact, I, in fact, I think I hear the bell now. Buddy Bear! <laughs> Hello, buddy. How are you, buddy? It's good to see you. <laughs> Well, come on, boys. Let's sit down and play some cards. Oh, just a minute. I invited another friend of mine. You invited somebody else? Yeah. Who was it? Did I, Preston Foster? Preston Foster? Yeah. I don't want to play with him. He cheats. Oh, get out. He gets out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I will not play. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. All right. All right. All right. Matter of fact, I think I hear the bell now. You sit yeah, right here. Hey. I'll go over here. My gosh, it's good to see you yeah. fellas. You know? Good to be let's with you. We're going to win some money. money. Yeah, let's put the money up on the table. Money on the table? Money up money on, the, on table. the table. What are we going to play? Draw poker. Deuce is wild. Draw poker, deuce is wild. That's right. Okay. Uh, incident. Oh, you know something? I forgot the cards. I'll run down the general store. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I brought my own. That's fine. <laughs> All right. I'll deal them. Wait a minute. They're my cards. I'll deal them. That's yeah, right. Let him deal with it. Sure, right. Wait a minute. You don't mind if I cut him, do you? All right, cut him. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. One. I like the way you do it. Two. Three. Four. Five. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. One. Two. Three, four, wow. five. That's a very funny way to deal, I'll say that. They're my cards, I'll deal them any way I want. Oh, sure. okay. Okay. All right, here we go, draw poker deuces what? game we playing? Draw poker. Deuce is wild. Yeah, just don't change the game, that's all. <laughs> all right, uh, who opens the pot? I'll open it. 200. 200, huh? Just a minute, I got to study this hand. I got a pretty tough hand here. Hmm. Okay, there's your 200, and I'm raising a dollar. I don't want to take a chance. I'm a plunger, you know. <laughs> huh? I'm staying. I'll see you. I'm looking. I'm looking, and I'll raise you 400. You're ready, huh? You're ready. Raise your 400, I'll raise you 800. <laughs> I gotta study this a little bit. All right. There's your 800. I'm raised again. Half it up. I'll see you. Nothing. I'll stay, and I'll raise you 1600. Here you are, this is 1600, and I'll raise you 3200. You raise again, huh? Jimmy, there's only one deck, isn't there? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, I'll just stay. That's all. I don't want to throw my dough away. I got a good chance to get inside straight here. <laughs> all right. Gamblers, cards. How many do you want? I'll take four. <laughs> I wonder if he's bluffing. 
How many cars do you want? Oh, I'll just struggle along with these. <laughs> Wait a minute. What game are we playing? Poker. What kind of poker? Draw poker. Then you gotta draw some cards. Draw, draw some cards. cards. I don't draw want any cards. Draw some cards. I don't need any. Draw, draw some, some cards. cards. Okay, okay. We gotta draw cards. Okay. I'll take three. No! <laughs> I do, lady. <laughs> Just give me one, that's all. <laughs> take two. I'll take two. <laughs> Hand. That's a straight. Yeah. That ain't good enough. I got a flush. Yeah. But just a minute. I got the winning hand. Full house. Wait a minute, boys. I got the winning hand. I got five aces. I had it from the beginning. I had the deuce and I was like, oh, Wait I'll a the... minute. Wait a minute. I got the winning hand. You got a hand beats five aces? I got a hand beats five aces. What do you got? I got a flitty ward diddly. <laughs> a what? A flitty ward diddly. What's a flitty ward diddly? No two cards alike. Everyone is different. <laughs> So that's a pretty war diddly, huh? Boy, I've had that hand a thousand times. I never knew what it was. Take his mask off and see who the little runt is. I never did like to shoot strangers. Huh? Levántense y comiencen a andar. Y si los vuelvo a ver, los mato. Shoulder. Don't catch his horse and take him to the cabin. I'll get the boss. Where's the money you drew out of the bank? All right, Ben. You're a smart man. If you don't tell us where that money is, you'll never get out of that chair alive. So I'll make a deal with you. You tell us where it is, we'll take it and clear out of the country. You're wasting your time. Anderson, I wouldn't make a deal with you on a rotten pair of bridle reins. Let me talk to him. I said you're wasting your time. He'll talk when I get through with him. You'd better start talking, Ben. No. Give me that meat slicer. You better start talking, Ben. 
Ranching's pretty tough for a blind man. I'll give you until I count three. One. Two. Manos arriba. Voltense. Pronto. Thanks, son. Sus prisioneros, señor. Just relax, boys. It's all over, Anderson. Wait a minute, don't shoot. I'm taking you into Sheriff Barnes. A voice. You killed Uncle Jed, and I'll see that you hang for it. Ben's daughter. Well, you're all mixed up. I didn't shoot Jed. Well, I've been trying to find the man that did it myself. Don't move, Anderson. Now, wait a minute. One more step and it'll be your last. And drop that rifle. All right, but you're making a mistake. Marshall's daughter done things she hadn't taught her to help her daddy keep the peace and love. And tonight she'd go out prowling, all the coyotes they was a howling, and as a boy she fought to help her paw. Oh, my charming daughter with eyes like deep water, the starlight in your hair most every night. Oh, you've been a heap of joy, how I wish you'd have been a boy. Cause I know you'd stand beside me in a fight. Lori! Oh, Lori! Lori! Oh, hello, Russ. Oh, oh, oh I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you were, uh... Oh, don't go, Russ. I'll be right out. You just caught me ironing my shirt in the kitchen. Any news? <laughs> yeah, I'll say there is. Uh... Anderson, he's gang are through. What? How did it happen? Is Dad all right? Oh, he's fine. Told me to tell you to be home just as soon as he filled out his report on the case. Gee, Russ, I'm sure glad it's all over. So am I. 
You know, with Anderson and Trigger Gans out of the way, maybe your dad will decide to settle and retire on his ranch. Well, if he does, you know what's the first thing I'm going to do? No, Lori, what? This. Oh, here's Dad now. Good news, Dad. Yes, sir. Things ought to be pretty quiet around here now. Augie Hawk broke down and told the whole story after El Coyote dumped Anderson's body off in front of the sheriff's office. Did he find out that you're a marshal? No, thanks to that Coyote guy. I sure owe him a lot. You talked to him, Mr. Dawson. You have any idea who he is? No, I wish I did. But the sound of his voice, he's pretty young. But believe me, he's a real man. Oh, I don't know, Dad. I'll bet he's not half the man you are. You know something, Laurie? I got a hunch you're right. <laughs>